joining us once again here on the Rich Eisen Show, entering his seventh year in the National Football League, DeMarco Murray. How are you, DeMarco? I'm great. How are you, Rich? Uh, better for talking to you. Um, I'm really high on your Tennessee Titans right now. What What are the goals for this team? I mean, lay it out for me here, DeMarco. Um, obviously, our, our goals are to get better every day. Obviously, you know, um, it's very early, second week of preseason. Um, just finished up our second day with the Panthers, and um, it was a great, great two days work with those guys, and um, thought we got better as a, as a offensive unit, special teams, and defense. And I think our goals right now is just like every other team. And you know, obviously, you want to uh, win your division, make the playoffs, and obviously go for the Lombardi. But uh, at the same time, we got to take them one day at a time and focus on us. Well, being on a, a team that you you were on a, a couple of years ago, where you were a Des Bryant catch, not a catch away from. Uh, taking a big step towards winning a Super Bowl. How does this team compare, do you think? Yeah, I think we compare. Obviously, um, you know, Rashad Matthews came along great last year. We got a really good um, receiving depth. Um, Delaney's one of the best tight ends in the league, offensive line. Very similar to the one we had in Dallas. And, you know, obviously, we're, we're led by number eight, you know, back there, quarterback, a guy who um, I call him the quiet assassin. You know, he's a guy who um, has a lot of heart, has a lot of pride about you know, us as a team, and um, he's looking forward to having a big year for us. What do you, why do you call him an assassin, a quiet assassin, DeMarco? Because he, he, he is very quiet. What, where's the assassin part? He is quiet. He is quiet. You know, I think the assassin part is just how he approaches the game on a daily basis. You know, he doesn't say too much. He, he's just a, he's a pro, you know, for a third-year guy to come in and work as hard as he works on his craft and on his – his footwork and his throwing motion, things like that. I mean, obviously, he has a great coach in J. Mike, and uh, he's the guy who makes plays for us. He makes plays for us when we need him. Um, he can run the ball, you know, which, which obviously is a great tool for us. He can put the ball on the money whenever he needs to. So, when you say hard worker, can you give me an example where you, you're 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 showing up? He's already there, or something like that, or you look across the field and you see something that you don't normally see out of a quarterback, Demarco. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, he's, he's usually the first guy in here. Um, always. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I get there pretty early. Uh, myself and Delaney and obviously off his line, but he's, he's always beating us, always in the training room, getting treatment um, in the weight room, doing what he has to do to get warmed up, to get loose. And, um, you know, obviously when we take brainstorm practice, he's over there with the quarterbacks, getting throws in, making sure the timing is right with the receivers and things like that. So he has a great work ethic. DeMarco Mari joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. What can we expect with you and Derrick Henry in terms of carries? How's that split going to go this year, do you think? Uh, I let my coaches worry about that. Um, for me, you know, it's always, you know, obviously I'm a starter here and I pride myself on, on doing more than just running the ball. You know, I pride myself on pass protection and being able to run out of the backfield and, and you know, catch some balls. So for me, it um, doesn't really matter to me. I'm focused on, you know, obviously winning and obviously you want to be out there and make as many plays as you can for your team. Um, but I'll let my coaches figure that out. <laughs> well, have the coaches talked to you about it? I mean, is that the way it works essentially? Where like, okay, DeMarco, we're going to put you in these situations and, Derek, we're going to work you in these situations? No, no, I, I don't think we run that way. Obviously, you know, I mean, I think for us, you know, it's um, just similar to last year. You know, obviously we're, we're both going to get the ball. We're both going to have our times to you know, get on the field. Um, and I think for me it's just all about, you know, just taking it one play at a time. You know, and if I am too tired, he goes in there and, and gives me some time. And, you know, he's, he's a, a good young running back, and he'll play in this league for a long time. And, um, I, you know, for us, I, I think it's, it's great we're both here on the same team. Well, in our draft coverage, Steve Smith on the NFL Network said that Corey Davis reminded him of Terrell Owens. What say you? Um, you know, Corey. Corey's a he's a very talented guy. You know, another guy who doesn't say much. Guys, uh, as a young guy, you know, you expect those guys to be kind of loud and a little obnoxious. You know, especially uh, having you know being being drafted so high, but. He's, he's a guy that we're excited about. Obviously, he's missed a couple of time, you know, some time with, with the hamstring, but hopefully he's coming back in the in the time being. And um, just he's working hard to get back out there. But he's a guy that definitely can go up and get the ball, we'll run very terrific routes, and, and we're excited to have him. Uh, I got to be honest with you, Demarco. When you said guys, you know, like that, loud and obnoxious, I thought you were just going to say wide receivers. I almost <laughs> there's a few of them out there. There's a few. I'm just glad we don't have them on our team. Okay. <laughs> Because, you know, it's, I thought you were about to paint all wide receivers with that broad brush, DeMarco. No, 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 not right now. Okay. Maybe next time. <laughs> it's interesting how you say that Corey's a guy who does a, doesn't do a lot of talking. Um, and Mariota's a guy who doesn't do a lot of talking. And you're a guy who doesn't do very much talking either. It's odd that you all play for uh, a, a, a coach who does so much talking in Mike Malarkey, DeMarco. <laughs> I mean. Oh, uh, 
you know, he's the head ball coach, so I think he deserves to talk whenever he wants to. Mm-hmm. And uh, definitely I'm glad that he has to do it a lot more than we have to. But um, him, Taylor mm-hmm. Lewan, and um, Jarrell Casey, Delaney, those are kind of the talkers on our team. So we leave it up <laughs> to those guys um, that, that do all that. But they're great. They're great players, great people. Come on, is, give, give me a good malarkey story. Does he cut the rug? Does he cut up? Does what? what give me a good one. What's your best Mike no, Malarkey Malarkey's story? A funny guy. He um he likes to play some jokes every now and then. He Come has on. A, he thinks he's a lot funnier than what he is. I, I would give him that. Uh, <laughs> I have to obviously laugh because he's the head ball coach. But um some of his jokes aren't too funny. <laughs> okay, so he's he does cut it up because it looks like he's just playing. I mean, he looks like he's the straight man. If I had to figure it out, to Marco. I would say 90, 90% of the time he is, but, you know, the other 10%, he'll crack a joke with you. Um, but that's the thing about him. You know, he's, he's a player's coach. He's a guy who expects a lot from us, and we understand, you know, we're pros. So he wants to, you know, every direction, you know, no matter walk through, game, lifting, traveling, he wants us to be pros at all times. He wants us to, you know, be focused and mentally sharp at all times. So we get that, um, the trickle-down theory, you know, from him to the coaches to know every player on this roster i gotta tell you i'm looking at your first four games the first one against oakland that could be huge i mean home field advantage for a playoff game could be on the line later on in the season for something like that you're at jacksonville where the jaguars are going to try and feel their oats in their home opener then you're home for seattle at the houston texans demarco those are very important statement games for you and i know the whole one game at a time situation but approaching those games do you feel like these are all measure up games for your team right off the bat? Um, I would, yeah, of course, you know, of course, obviously those are, um, I think two, two of those teams, you know, I mean, you know, Oakland and, and Seattle, Seattle obviously has been, been to the Super Bowl last couple of years. Oakland has had a, a great run the last couple of years and, you know, in our division, you know, Houston has won it in the last couple of years. Jacksonville had made some big, big splashes this offseason with a, and, and you know they get, they got us in week you know um, 16 last last year so um, it's obviously you know a tough schedule you know we're excited about we're excited about the challenge and, and our main focus is to take it one game at a time you know you try not to look down the road but um, so you definitely can't look past the Oakland Raiders so we're excited to have them come here to to Nashville and um, you know, we'll see what happens. Okay, and uh, you're from Vegas. The fact that the Raiders are heading there, do you think that's going to work out? What do you think? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. The people of um, you know, Las Vegas, you know, obviously they've been burning for a team for quite some time and finally got one next year, and um, you know, hopefully they do well, but not this year uh, <laughs> or the next year. But I'm excited that, obviously, I'm from Vegas, born and raised. I love it. I still, you know, consider that my home. My family still lives there. So, um, you know, I, I know the, the city is very, very ecstatic about, you know, the Raiders moving there. Do you have a take on McGregor and Mayweather going down in Vegas coming up in nine days? You know what? I'm a big UFC guy. Great friends with Dana and um, Lorenzo. Obviously, he's out of it now. But um, you know, I wouldn't say. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It's definitely going to be interesting. I'm, I'm excited. Definitely going to watch the fight. I wish I can go, but um, it's going to be tough. Obviously, Floyd's a Vegas guy, and I'm friends with with Dana and the, and, and the rest of those guys up there. So I'm just hoping for a great fight. And um, but it's definitely going to be tough. Hmm. So you're thinking? <laughs> I'm I'm trying to. You know, you got I, you got a lot of allegiances there. It sounds like you yeah, think. Yeah, I do. You know, it's hard to bet against obviously Mayweather when he's I don't know forty nine and old, whatever the case may be, and mm-hmm. then McGregor's coming in there from a. You know, obviously he's a striker. He's, he's a warrior. The one thing you can't put it past him is you know he's going to fight. He's going to fight to the very end. So it's, it's definitely going to be interesting. Were you surprised by Bob Stoops stepping down at your alma mater, Demarco? I was a little bit. You know, obviously, you know, when you think of Oklahoma, you think of, you know, big game Bob. And I was fortunate to play there and spend some time and have a great relationship with him, you know, um, even after I was done there. And um, he's a wonderful man from top to bottom, great football coach, you know, great father, husband, and um, a guy that definitely taught you, you know, the importance of life and not just football. So uh, for me, you know, it was um, it was a little saddened. I was a little saddened by it, but you know, I think every every good thing comes to an end at some point, and uh, I think they're excited, excited about um, you know Lincoln Riley and Norman. So hopefully he brings brings us some more Big Twelve championships and some national championships. Yeah, in terms of good things, all good things come to an end. Obviously, your stay in Dallas a few years ago did. What did you think of all the uh, Hall of Fame hoopla for Jerry Jones, Demarco? You know, I had a great four years there. You know, one thing about Jerry, he's a, he's a family-oriented man, and um, you know, I was able to witness that firsthand. 
Um, you know, not just him, but, you know, his entire family, the entire Joe's family, you know, they treat you like family, you know, and, um, you know, he deserves it. He deserves it, everything he, he, he's received, and obviously he's, he's definitely worthy of the, um, you know, Hall of Fame. So it was great to see him, great to listen to his speech. I thought he did a great job. Now, I got I to gotta say this. I'm just looking at the first week one schedule, um, and I'm looking at the games on CBS. I don't know where he's going to wind up, but Oakland Raiders at Tennessee Titans – has to be the spot, essentially. I would put my A team, and I think Tony Romo is going to be in that booth. What is that going to be like, strolling into a broadcaster's meeting and seeing Tony Romo sitting there, DeMarco? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be funny. Hopefully my guy is at the game and, and calling the game, and um, he, he's going to do great at the job. And um, It will be great. Obviously, it's going to be a little weird, and I know he'll try to get a lot more information out of me than anyone else, so I have to maybe – um, text him and let him know off the record or something. But uh, he's a great guy, um, very, very well liked, and um, I'm excited to you know see his, see him in the future. Yeah, I think he's going to do great at it. I really do. Did you think at the time when you were playing with him that he wanted to do this? Um, you know what? I, I figured he would. I think I thought it would either be that or, or coaching. Obviously, he knows the game inside and out. He's a you know very well spoken guy, and we took a family vacation. Um, after the season this year to Bora Bora, um, huh. his wife and my wife and I and a couple other couples. And um, that's when he first told me before he announced it. And I was like, holy crap, man, congrats. You know, obviously, um, I, I didn't think he would retire. I thought he still wanted to play. And um, just, he's, just, he's a, you know, he's very competitive. So I know he's been working hard at it. And I know he, he, he'll do a fine job at it. So what's it like going on vacation with Tony? Um, and and his and his family are they are they are they a couple that's on time? Do they keep everybody waiting? Tell me, what's it like going on vacation with them? I will say he's always on time. Okay, that's um, good. Well, he's definitely always a very generous guy, obviously. And okay. um, the one thing about it that I guess the only negative is he he controls the um, Bose speaker. He doesn't allow people to play any type of music but himself. So what? I guess when you um, what you're going to bore bore. I mean. I guess any time with him, he, he, he's the one who wants to control the music, so I allow, him, I allow it for the most part. Those quarterbacks are control freaks, man. They really are. Was, they it, are. was it at least <laughs> acceptable music selection, at least? Um, at times, you know, he, he comes with some great hits. You know, um, every now and then, um, about 10 minutes, it gets a little boring, and I have to, you know, maybe budge him a little bit and let him know, hey, I'm going to take over if he doesn't change it. So then he, he hypes it back up a little bit. And he calls an audible. I see. Very good. <laughs> Take care of yourself, DeMarco. Great chatting with you. We'll chat with you down the line. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Always. That's at DeMarco Murray on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you liked some of that, get some more of that on the Rich Eisen Show app. Follow all the information you see right here on the Rich Eisen Show.